is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmoth. Starting in November, the U.S. will once again allow foreign travelers to fly into the country for the first time in 18 months. The new policy, which requires those passengers to show proof of COVID vaccination, is a big deal for airlines, business groups, and families who called the step long overdue. This morning, Willis Orlando with Scott's Cheap Flights is here to talk about the announcement and what this means for airfare moving forward. Let's talk about, first off, what this means, um, flights from Europe and, and international flights resuming to America. Um, what's your take on it? Is it long overdue? And, and can you give me the nuts and bolts about it? Yeah, you know, as of early November, the existing travel ban on travelers to the U.S. from Europe, the U.K., and elsewhere will finally be lifted after 18 months, right? This was put into place in March 2020. Um, as of early November, all foreign nationals who otherwise could have entered the U.S. will now be allowed to enter again, so long as they can A, show proof of full vaccination, B, submit a recent negative test, and C, submit a contract tracing form. This is very much in line with what a lot of Europe has been requiring of Americans for months and other visitors for months. Um, these kind of programs have worked very well elsewhere. And folks who I've talked to here in Europe say, hey, this is well overdue. We've been waiting to visit family. We've been welcoming Americans with open arms. We're so glad it's finally a little bit of reciprocation uh, on the U.S. side. Uh, you know, you're in Italy right now. Um, take us through the process of, of if someone here in America wants to travel overseas and maybe they have family there. Um, what's that process like? Is it relatively easy? Any tips? Yeah, you know, after almost two years in kind of a state of lockdown and travel panic, kind of getting on the plane for the first time and crossing the Atlantic to go to Europe again, it's very, very intimidating for a lot of folks. But I'm here to tell you, hey, it's not as hard as you may think. The, hard, the best thing you can do is just be vigilant and pay attention. You know, go to the U.S. Embassy website in the country where you're going. You know, in my case, it was Italy. And check, you know, current requirements regularly before you go so you know exactly what's required of you. For most countries, all you're going to need to do is show your CDC card. Um, that little white card, it goes a long way. There's no other, um, you know, fancy little dig digitized mechanism to use. That little white card uh, suffices. Uh, you may have to fill out an online form which just says, you know, who you are, where you're going. Um, who you're traveling with, et cetera. Um, and then in some cases, you may have to submit uh, a test as well, test results. Usually the airline will check that as you check in. So, you know, you don't have to worry about showing up to the border and then being turned away. The airline will make sure that you're all, you know, you're all squared away before you get on the plane. They don't want to fly you over there just to have to fly you back. Mm -hmm. um, also, another great thing to, to note right now, you know, even though flights are resuming, there's a lot more planes in the sky than there were before. Those planes are not very full right now. You know, when I flew over here, I flew on Brussels Airlines from Washington, D.C. to Brussels. And that plane was about 25% full. That means, you know, you're not in, in close quarters. Everyone in that plane had to submit a contact tracing form and, you know, either vaccination or test results. So you knew you were in a very, very safe space. It's not nearly as nerve wracking as you, as you might expect. So back to showing proof of vaccination, uh, you need physical, you need the white card, the CDC card, physical form. You can't have a picture or anything like that. Yeah, you know, it depends country to country. Some some gate agents may accept a picture. You know, when we came over here, we brought our white card. We had a photo with us as well. Um, but in general, we always found it easier to bust out that white card. We didn't want any ifs, ands, or buts about it. On the ground in Europe, some countries have more regulations. Here, where I am in Italy, for example, um, you need to show what they call a green pass to do indoor dining, go to concerts, sporting events, gyms. Um, when we go out to dinner, we just bring our CDC cards. Some restaurants accept a photo. Others just want to see the card. Um, but everyone knows what it is, and you can get it anywhere um, just using that little white card. It's good to know. I do want to ask you, too, about, um, about airfare uh, and what this will ultimately do in, in your take when it comes to uh, not only flights internationally, but domestically as well. Yeah, you know, throughout the pandemic, especially over the last eight months or so, as travel started to kind of open back up again, we've seen a predictable pattern. Whenever a country opens up its borders to travelers from another country, we see a spike in searches to that area. So in this case, we would see a spike in searches to the U.S. from Europe, right? The airlines then scramble to get out ahead of this kind of resurgence in demand by adding lots more planes and larger planes on these routes, which increase, increases supply kind of exponentially really quickly overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, demand has typically not kept up with supply, and that means the prices go down in the short term. Mm -hmm. Right after Iceland opened up for Americans, we saw fares in the 200s round trip from throughout the U.S. to Iceland, um, and that kind of pattern continued. We're seeing that right now between the U.S. and Europe as well. You know, U.S. airlines already started to open up more routes to Europe, and now we're seeing European airlines reciprocate. That means more seats, 
lower prices. You know, just in the last couple of weeks, we saw 342 bucks round trip from Orlando to Italy, 329 round trip from Orlando to Paris, uh, and many more between the US and Europe. We expect to see more and more frequent deals um, internationally. The backside of this, the kind of negative side of this, is we may see in the long term going into 2022, domestic prices start to rebound a little bit. You know, throughout the pandemic, they've been kind of rock bottom. And a big reason is that a lot of airlines took those large planes that used to fly to Rome and Tokyo uh, and decided to start running them instead to leisure routes like Orlando, Miami, Honolulu. Those planes are going to go back to flying internationally again, which means supply will shrink a little bit. Uh, and so we may see inter- uh, domestic prices kind of return to where they were pre-pandemic. You mentioned um, Orlando, obviously, that's where I am. Uh, the impacts that this will have uh, for the tourism uh, are great, huge impacts, right? I mean, I know people uh, all across the world are itching to come to Disney, to visit the theme parks, to enjoy winter as we move into fall and winter in the state of Florida and certainly Orlando. So this is going to have a big impact. Yeah, you, you can expect, I think anyone in a big tourist hotspot like Orlando, like Miami, like Las Vegas, can expect the economy to get a little boon from this. You know, Europeans have a lot of vacation time and they've been waiting a long time to get back over here, mm-hmm. right? So they're going to come, they're going to spend that disposable income that they have in the US. You know, we can expect folks in the tourism and hospitality business to kind of get a little boon from this uh, new announcement. Um, the other thing to pay attention to is that a lot of airlines, especially European airlines, were holding off on adding those nonstop routes to leisure destinations. You know, they were keeping their Chicago and New York routes, but they were holding off on adding these nonstop vacation routes until they knew the coast was clear. Mm-hmm. Now you can expect airlines to add more of these nonstop routes from major European cities to places like Orlando um, or Melbourne. You might, might see those coming in as well um, in the coming months. So that's very exciting news for folks uh, on that side. And again, for cheap fares out of Orlando as well. You know, when people go to Europe and they take a Euro trip, um, obviously they, they take a plane over, but then it's a lot of uh, train travel, right? By rail. Is, is the, are the protocols the same? You know, to travel by rail, it really does vary country by country. Here where I'm in Italy, uh, it really depends on how far you're going. If you're going on a long-term, uh, long-distance high-speed train, they call the Freccia Rosa, Freccia Bianca here. I'm oh, sorry, I switched to Italian for a second. <laughs> Freccia <laughs> Bianca here. Um, uh, if you go on those, you need to show your green pass. You'll show your vaccination card in order to go on. Again, those trains then feel like the safest place in the world to be. You know, every single person on board with you um, has either been tested or ha- has shown they're vaccinated. For, you know, the slower trains, the ones that go between small cities, if you're going into, into the countryside, to the hill towns, um, generally it's a lot more casual. You can go on. You just need to wear a mask the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, in general, in Europe, on the ground, mask wearing is much more diligent than it is at home. So Americans should be prepared to get a comfortable mask, get a lot of them, um, be ready to wear them a little bit more than at home, but you'll have a great time once you get here. The accessibility to get a test, because I know that those are uh, needed to travel to different countries and to travel back home. Yeah. How, how, how is that accessibility? Yeah, on the ground in Europe, tests are widely available. They're very, very cheap. Um, you can pretty much get them all the time. Rapid tests that you get the results in 15 minutes are available at most major train stations uh, outside of all the airports. So you don't need to plan that far ahead if you're willing to, to shell out the between, say, 30 euro and 40 euro, so between $35 and $50 uh, US in order to get that test. So it is a, a lot easier here. You'll get those results. And those results are accepted by the airlines and by the US government to come back. Um, it is all a lot easier than one would expect. You know, you see this, these long lines of, of requirements between vaccinations and testing, and it can be very intimidating. But once you come, you realize Europeans have been traveling from country to country now for months. They've got this thing down to a science, and they're ready to let people fly back and forth between Europe and the U.S. as well. Coming up more on the trickle-down effect international travel will have on Americans and the best ways to score a cheap flight. Stay with us. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. This morning, we're breaking down the major announcement from the Biden administration. When it comes to foreign travelers, those changes take effect next month. And it appears folks from all over the world are itching to give back to America's tourist destinations, which, of course, includes Orlando. Here's more of my conversation with Willis Orlando from Scott's Cheap Flights. You work for Scott's Cheap Flights. I mean, as someone who's in travel um, and that's your livelihood. What has it been like for the last 18 months? It's been a wild ride, right? Since March, 2020, um, we've kind of been flying by the seat of our pants. We've been trying our best to make sure that our members can get content and we can do our job, which is give them flight deals. 
without being insensitive, without being crass, and without putting folks in danger, right? We don't want to be encouraging folks to travel places where it's not safe to go right now or where people on the ground really don't want them coming. So we've had to kind of become experts in international politics and epidemiology and all this other stuff, which we're, give, we're definitely not experts at at the moment. Um, that said, we've had an interesting time. We've learned a lot. And at the same time, we've had amazing airfares and we've seen folks start to travel. And we've been kind of at the, the forefront of this resurgence of travel, this return to something close to normal. It's been very exciting to be there, you know, probably around two, three months ago, we started seeing folks really start to travel internationally again, safely, effectively, reporting back that they got a deal. They went, you know, say to Paris for $300 round trip, and they had a great time in spite of all the regulations. Um, and it's really been exciting to, to see this come back from the front lines. Now, despite this announcement, there are some countries that uh, still cannot uh, travel to the U.S., right? I mean, this is not just a, you know, international flights are open. America is wel welcoming everyone back, right? Well, you know, the announcement does, it's been kind of vague, but as far as we know right now, most countries will be allowed to, to enter. They've kind of made it into a broad, broad, far reaching rule. Before the, 20, the March 2020 rule only applied to a handful of countries that were having a lot of trouble at the beginning of the pandemic. So we're talking Brazil, we're talking about countries in the EU like Italy, the UK, et cetera. Um, but now they're trying to make a broader rule where it says, hey, if you can go through all these protocols, mm -hmm. vaccination, one of the vaccines that we've approved in the U.S., to be sure, vaccination, testing and contact, trace, contact tracing, you, you will be welcome. You know, normal immigration rules still apply. If you needed a visa before, you need a visa now. Um, all those things are still in place. Um, but if you can go through these things and you were otherwise welcome, you now will be welcome again. Um, there's more complicated situation going on between the U.S. and Canada, um, but I'm sure we'll see more on that front very soon. Certain, yeah, that, a lot of talk going on there. Are, are there any <laughs> countries? Are there any countries that are uh, not allowing Americans? You know, there are some countries in Europe that that have been a little bit tighter with their rules. Um, but right now, every country within the EU mm -hmm. is accepting Americans with at least some sort of proof of vaccination, testing, or accommodation thereof. A couple countries, like here in Italy have tightened their rules. So before to enter Italy, you needed just to show you were either vaccinated or you tested negative. Now you need both. You, can, you cannot be unvaccinated to come to Italy now. So that's the kind of restriction we're seeing now. Um, but we're not seeing folks close the borders again to Americans, which is really great. Let's go back to booking travel. Uh, can you just go over some of the mistakes that folks make when booking airfare? Yeah, so there are a lot of kind of wives tales out there about how best to get a great deal, mm -hmm. right? And folks think, hey, I got to clear my browser history or go in incognito mode. Or I've got to book on a Tuesday at 2 p.m. Otherwise, I'm not going to get a good deal. I'm here to tell you that every single one of these things um, is a wives tale, is a myth. You know, I search for flights 30, 35 hours a week. I've been doing it for three years. I can tell you if these things were real, my job would be so much easier. Um, instead, what one needs to do is one, be prepared, book early. If you're traveling domestically, we say start your search you know, no fewer than three months out. If you can, do about one to three months out, you want to book. Mm -hmm. International, we're talking two to eight months out. So start as early as eight months ahead of time. Start looking for those fares and lock them in. Um, also, know what a good fare is. A lot of folks just don't understand what a good fare is, and that's understandable. You know, we don't buy anything else day to day that can fluctuate within a thousand dollars in a day, but airfare does. You know, I'll send a deal for two hundred dollars today that tomorrow will be a thousand bucks. So it's really hard to get a handle on it. Websites like ours on ScottsCheapFlights.com, you can see the deal history, the times that we, the flight experts have said, hey, this is a genuine deal. So you can see, hey, what price have they sent it at? And if they've sent it, I know this is a deal. So if I'm getting something close to that, I know I can pull the trigger on this thing. Um, the last thing I'd say is folks often hesitate. They wanna get all their ducks in a row before they book. If you're based in the US, you should know, you know, book the ticket first, then start try trying to figure things out. Because within the US, if you are booking a flight that touches US soil, you have a right legally to cancel within 24 hours of booking. So if you see a great deal, you know it's a great deal, book it now, then talk to your significant other, talk to everybody else, figure out whether you can really go. Worst case scenario, you cancel within 24 hours, no fuss, no muss, you get your money back. Best case scenario, you've got a great deal and you're ready to go somewhere great. That's always my biggest issue is trying to get my ducks in a row, seeing a great <laughs> deal, go back the next day, spiked up a little bit. I'm like, what, what did I think there? Um, you know, a lot, a lot of families last year had to make some tough decisions around the holidays um, and just didn't get to see family. Obviously, we expect this to change based on the trends and what we've been seeing over the last six months or so. Um, what do you expect uh, this year will look like at airports all across the country? 
Yeah, you know, we're expecting a resurgence in holiday travel again, but maybe not as much as people would have thought before. You know, the Delta variant has thrown a wrench in a lot of people's plans. We put a, a survey out with our members. We have 2 million plus members. We put a survey out to some of them a few weeks ago. And about 75% said that they were nervous or somewhat nervous about the Delta variant. And a large number of those said, hey, I'm not going to travel internationally this year. I don't want to travel at all this year. Um, so people are more hesitant than they were before. You know, in the summertime, uh, around Memorial Day, around the 4th of July, we saw huge crowds at airports. We saw kind of chaos. We saw mass cancellations. You know, in Orlando um, with Spirit, there were mass cancellations. Um, the airlines had a heck of a time. We expect demand to come back, but a little bit more slowly this time. That, that, that bonanza of summer, we don't expect it to come back quite in the same way. Um, so we should expect things to be a little bit more orderly in airports. Um, you know, planes to be a little bit less full. They're quite a bit less full than they were in the summer already right now. Um, and so hopefully this return to normal will be more gradual than we were seeing before. That quick resurgence to normal, um, the industry couldn't handle it. So um, we think now they're a little bit more ahead of the curve. They feel a little bit more well-prepared and folks are not quite ready to pull the trigger as fast as they were before. And uh, I, I do want to, before we end this, I do want to ask you um, what a member, if someone wants to become a member of Scott's Cheap Flights, uh, what does that mean for them? What will that do for them as they try to book travel uh, here uh, today or in the future? Yeah, you know, at scottschieflights.com, what we do is we scour the internet all day to find the best deals from your home airport or, or any other number of airports you subscribe to, to anywhere in the world, domestically or internationally. So if you sign up, you could sign up for free and you'll get a few emails a week telling you about some of the best deals that we find, a little sample of what we find from your home airport. Um, it could be like that $329 round trip from Orlando to Paris. It could be $199 round trip from Orlando to Alaska or any one, number one of the other deals we've found in the last month. Um, if you upgrade for $49 for the year to premium, you'll get every economy class deal we find from your home airport, domestic and international. Um, the deals are abundant. If you're in a market like Orlando, you would expect about five a week, maybe even more. Depends on how busy things are. And you will never miss one of the best fares. If we find a deal that we think is worthy of going to you, it'll be in your inbox. You also will have access to our database. We now have a searchable database online of everything we've found. Um, there are hundreds of deals online and you can kind of go through and see historical pricing trends, that kind of stuff, um, all hand curated by us, the experts. And then finally, if you are someone who loves the front of the plane, if you're one of those fancy types, uh, I'm notably a back of the plane guy, um, you can upgrade to our elite membership for $199 for a year. And then you'll also get first class uh, premium economy and business class deals. So if you want to you know, save a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks to sit in the front of the plane and sip champagne, um, we've got you covered there as well. And again, international flights to the U.S. will resume next month, and Central Florida tourism officials say they're excited about the potential boom it'll have on the local economy. For more information, including the protocols in place, just head to clickorlando.com weekly. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.